All right, so the last thing holding us back now on getting the kitchen finished and the heating and all that tested and ready to put down the last of the woodwork is this countertop. We just sanded it down yesterday, it actually put some really smooth uh, paper over it so it's really nice and smooth now. Before it was just sanded down with 40 grit. So we got this worktop oil, which will make it heat proof um, and it will just resist a lot more wear and tear. Before I think you could kind of just run your nail through and get some scratches so um yeah some good oil I'm gonna stick this on now so i did all the sand and the marine part and now you're just doing the oil which looks more sad <laughs> well you're welcome to join me mm. you join me? yes is that not a clock? Nope. <laughs> it looks like oiling is much easier than uh, waxing because you don't have to do the buffering. Buffing, yeah. Buffering. Buffering. <laughs> <laughs> Rita buffering. <Just> like <laughs> <laughs> All right, hello, welcome. So it's a nice, fine, sunny day here in uh, the outback of England. Got my work trousers on, and we're getting on with the electrics today. So we've got our wires from the solar panel running down the back here. So they're all going to be tied to the wall and they go down through the cupboard into the corner there. And then we've got loads of electrical bits and bobs around here. So last thing is control board. We're following the advice of a van dog traveler, no matter his name. And this can go next to our battery bay. So we have all the wires on the back end in the battery bay area, uh, running to negative terminals and so on. And then on the front, inside this section of the bed, which is on the other side of the batteries, we have access to all of the controls, so we can, you know, actually, um, you know, turn things off and so on and so forth. I'll just show you the back. It's not wired up yet, but essentially the back just becomes this area where all the wires are going to come out. Uh, I've got a bay there to put the wire in here in for the relay, and I'm going to actually cut another bay here for the wires for the solar. So this will come become loaded up full of wires and bits of metal, um, but keeps that all out of sight in the battery bay. And then that's all you see for dealing with uh, your, your switches and stuff, which is pretty cool. Tell you what else we've got quickly. Uh, we've got this switchboard where you can <coughs> add your own stickers on here, you can turn them all off individually, or all as one. You've got uh, two USB chargers in there, a 12 volt lead and then a readout of how uh, the batteries are doing. Some other bits and pieces but we'll get into that later.
Hey there. So it's been a week since the last video. Spent a lot of time getting a few things ready, but they were like really fiddly bits and I was like in little corners and nooks and crannies of the van. So it wasn't really worth filming any of that. <laughs> it would have been really hard to. I'm just gonna show you what's been done. Uh, mainly the electrical setup and then a few other bits and pieces. None of this has been tied down yet. So the wires are organized, but they're just not bolted down. So they look a bit loose and messy. Uh, they're 215 amp hour batteries. The first thing I did was get a little wire going from the engine bay which comes through the footwell there uh, snuck it all around the edges here and you can just see the red poking up where it comes out below the floor and that links up to our Durite split charge relay. This little thing maintains the engine voltage and routes it through to charge the batteries. And um, that's rigged up to here and the back comes out to this kill switch so I can just turn off the batteries at any time by turning that and then that comes away so it's a safety feature and it also helps so now I've turned it on you can probably see here on our MPPT that it will start to charge soon well, I think they're full and they're nearly full anyway yeah so anyway um so then the switch runs to the MPPT. Uh, it's all hooked up under there. Um, then we've got the wires coming from the solar panel. Go through this cupboard, down the back, and along here, and then to the MPPT. The other bits and pieces we've got here, this is just a negative block. So anything, any appliances we have, or the, you know, the lighting and all that, is gonna run to negative, uh, negative terminals there. And then there's the main terminal that connects to the main negative points, which I've just dug out a little hole on the back there, which I'll need to up at some point, but you're not even gonna see that, so that's uh, that's where all the negatives run off to. And the other thing is this. This is the hugely bulky mains consumer unit. Um, so essentially that's like a fuse board in your house, so you can turn that on to take on the mains power, and then you can run it to like sockets and whatever other appliances you have. That's gonna be installed at a later time. Charging the batteries every day, and it's really good. It's a 300 watt panel, so any bit of light, it still does some good charging. And then when the engine's on, the Durite's charging as well. This is doing great. Oh yeah, so we've also got this. So everything right now is on 12 volt, um, but this will convert everything to uh, the standard household socket. So that's an inverter. It's gonna handle 600 watts. It's got a USB as well. Basically everything that comes out of the, the main MPPT charge controller, those two wires down there are going to this, which is our main switchboard. There you go. So now power is being sent to that and you can see it's charging. This is an indicator of, of the charge level. And I can turn on different things. And I've got the wires going to the water pump. And this one I think is the inverter. If I turn this on, there we go. So it just does a test and now it's ready to be used. I can plug in anything in that and that will handle up to uh, 600 watts. And it's a pure sine wave inverter. So, you know, good electronic devices like a laptop, MacBook, for example can run off of that and there won't be any charging problems or failures down the line. The other one here is the wiring for the pump which then goes back up this line. There's a conduit cable which runs up through the ceiling and then comes down out this little section and I've run it down so you can see it come out the bottom there and then in here is where I'll rig up the micro diaphragm pump we have. Um, other than that, last thing I did yesterday was install the water heater. Uh, Haobang water heater, hope it doesn't make that noise when we turn it on, but that will be a great little water heater for us. It's, it can do five liters per minute. So yeah, that's gonna be all hooked up under here, got space. We can adjust the controls just through this cupboard, uh, which won't need to be done much, you know, probably once every season. Once I've got all the plumbing and, and the pump all sorted in here, then I'll be able to finally close up this kitchen with all the bits of wood I've got on the side and I've got the face plate for the front. Once, once that's all done, 
the kitchen will be sorted. We've got the even the, got the sink and the gas cooker over there. Just got to put the gas can in. It's coming along quickly and it's it's wrapping up, which is very nice. You know, it's been four months now. I'm gonna crack on with this plumbing and stop talking. <laughs> Uh, and, and show some some work, but um, any questions or like I missed out on anything just let me know. All right, peace All right, so I've just hooked up the connector to the water tank and um, They come with everything you need in these kits but I will mention one thing, and I've, I've noticed this is a problem with other people as well. The, the little fastener cap they give you is really small. So this is actually a part I bought from B&Q for a quid or something. And it's got this ring on the outside, whereas the other one is literally just the hexagonal port. This has the washer kind of built into it, so it really helps pull against the other side of the material. And I'll show you the other one. I've got it in here. So there, that's what they give you. <laughs> it just looks pathetic compared to the, the other one. So I definitely advise if you get the Fiamma tank, uh, it's a great tank, just replace that part. I'll save myself some hassle in the future of having a leaky drippy pipe at the tank by buying this part for a quid. So there you go. All right, now it's time to fit it all together. So here's the little board I've rigged up for the pump. Two pieces of ply with a foam sandwich between. So I'm gonna put that into the wall. And I've also put a sound deadening pad on the spot where it's gonna go, just to give it some extra sound deadening. So there we go, I'll put that in now. Hello again. So now I've just about finished the plumbing system. I've only got to put on you know, a couple of taps. We've got our drinking water tap, a small one there, and we've got our main faucet here. It's quite a nice little design, I like that. Uh, dual tap put on one stem here, uh, so it's very good space saving, that's the only space it takes up on the countertop. Uh, we've got our connectors here, and I've already rigged up the filter and everything, the pipe work that's ready for that, so I'll show you. So I'll start at the end, we've got our boiler put in here, the water heater, and there's the water filter. Um, so everything's connected. This water filter it just leaches off of the cold water pipe. So that's going up there and then at the back, uh, just behind the flue here, is where the pipe comes out. Yeah, you can just see the corner of it there. The pipe for the hot water, uh, which will then just connect to that tap. This all runs down under here. Uh, we've got that one going to the shower, so that goes over to the back, and I'll show you. Comes around to our little pipe over here. We've got a shutoff valve for the hot water there, and that's rigged up to a T junction, which comes across to the side here. And I've taken off this panel, um, so there's the main pipe, which leads to a tube going to our pump, and the pump then connects to this hose, which is rigged up to the tank. And at the back here, this pipe goes under. There it is. That pipe goes down under the floor and comes out over here. So it comes up here. So now this pipe will go actually under the gap of the shower tray. Um, it's already rigged up, so it's gonna come out underneath here and feed into this pipe. And it comes up to here. All nice and stuck in. And we've got a long shower hose there. Um, and I'm going to fit this on uh, you know, a bracket with a rubber ring here or a grommet so that you can actually pull it out and we'll be able to take it outside. And if you know if it's good weather, we can shower and not have to worry about the waste tank. So, I've got a few things to rig up, but that is 90% done. A nice hole in there which will be on this corner, and we'll have our main tap on one side, and a little drinking tap in the corner, which will be good. Pieces of wood here from the um, donation bin, the collection bin at B&Q, so put a couple of quid in there and just took all this, all this nice wood, and I'll use that around the van for some little details and you know, probably like skirting boards, you know? So, that's that. 
uh, there's a lot of uh, progress that's been made. Um, things are now on their way to being sealed up and you know all faced up and decorated. So that's good. I've also wired up the lighting. Uh, we've got this all connected. This is on one ring, so I'm going to put all the lights on one ring. And we're going to have a light at the back over here. Uh, we're going to have a light over here, a little reading spotlight lamp here by the bed. And then we've got some LED strip lighting, which we're going to put under the cabinets and cupboards. And obviously, you know, for the kitchen, just have some like under here so that can all be well lit when uh, need be. So it's all coming together now. Uh, we're, we're getting out of the, the main functional practical pieces and further into the details and, and facing things up, decorating, um, finalizing stuff. So really super happy about that, uh, feeling good. And uh, we're starting to move into springtime, so things are getting warmer, sunnier. I'll, uh, I'll leave that there and crack on with some more stuff, which I'll, I'll do a bit of filming of. Ciao. What are you doing? I'm putting some reflectix in these gaps while our wires go so we don't have so much exposed metal because what happens if we have exposed metal? Uh, all the condensation gathers here, right? Mm. And it can rust and also loads of cold gets in here. And then Anthony can build something wooden to go on here. I'm ill, why do you have so much light on me? There you go, look, I've got like a backlight on you now. Ooh, backlight. Well, I'm done, so. Look what I did. I put a switch there. Look, plug socket switch. And it does nothing. Oh no. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but. But it's there and it will do something. Yay. Eventually. Join us next time when we'll build our kitchen cupboard and line the cabin wardrobe. We have to put up with the changing springtime weather, but have a lot more fun as the build comes to completion. We also fit our dash cam with a rear view parking camera and finalize the entire shower, including our custom pull out toilet hidden behind a waterproof hatch. See you next time. Well, I'm sure it will become useful one day, but not yet.